Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Learning Biology with Dr. Vanessa. In the last few videos, we've been talking about the respiratory system. In today's video, we're gonna continue with the respiratory system and take a look at the physiology of how gas exchange occurs within the lungs. Gas exchange is the process by which oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged between the lungs and the bloodstream. This process occurs in the respiratory zone, which includes the respiratory bronchioles and alveoli. This is the main function of the respiratory system, to constantly and consistently supply oxygen to the tissues and to remove carbon dioxide so that it does not accumulate. Seems simple enough, but what is the physiology behind how this actually happens? Gas exchange occurs between the alveoli and the capillaries that surround them. Deoxygenated blood from the heart comes to the lungs via the right side of the heart, through the pulmonary artery, and then enters into tiny capillaries within the lungs. The blood in the capillaries will then release carbon dioxide into the lungs to be exhaled and pick up oxygen that has been inhaled. This oxygenated blood then goes back to the left side of the heart to be pumped throughout the body, delivering oxygen and nutrient-rich blood to all the tissues. The movement of gas from one area to another, such as from the alveoli to the capillaries, or vice versa, occurs through diffusion. Diffusion is the movement of substances, in this case gases, from areas of higher concentration to areas of lower concentration. Gas exchange, or the diffusion of gases, involves the partial pressure gradients. Because air is a mixture of gases, including nitrogen, oxygen, water vapor, and carbon dioxide, we refer to the partial pressure of a specific gas. This is determined by multiplying the atmospheric pressure by the percentage of the specific gas in the atmospheric air. The partial pressure of the gas is going to depend on two elements. One, its concentration in the mix of air. The greater the concentration of a gas, the greater its partial pressure will be. And two, its solubility. When gas diffuses through a liquid, as would happen in the alveoli and capillaries, the solubility of gases is important to its rate of diffusion. The more soluble a gas is in a fluid, the less it wants to escape. Therefore, it creates a lower partial pressure at a given concentration in the fluid. Carbon dioxide, for example, is much more soluble in water or blood than oxygen. Therefore, it takes a much greater concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood to create the same partial pressure exerted by a lower concentration of oxygen. External gas exchange is the transfer of oxygen from alveoli to blood and the transfer of carbon dioxide from blood to the alveoli. This occurs entirely by diffusion. Gas diffusion across the pulmonary membrane depends on two main factors. One, the partial pressure gradients between alveolar air and the blood, and two, the health of the lung tissue. Oxygen diffuses from oxygen-rich alveolar air into oxygen-depleted pulmonary arterial blood. Oxygen is not soluble in water, so only about 1% of blood oxygen can dissolve in the plasma. The majority of oxygen is carried in the blood bound to hemoglobin found in the red blood cells. Since the partial pressure of oxygen is high in the lungs due to the atmospheric air that has come in, oxygen can readily bind to the hemoglobin within the capillaries. Carbon dioxide will have a higher concentration within the capillaries as it has entered blood from the tissues and gone to those capillaries. So carbon dioxide is going to go from the capillaries into the lungs to be exhaled. Now carbon dioxide, remember, is soluble. So carbon dioxide, about 80 to 90% of it, is actually going to be carried as bicarbonate.
I'm going to put the equation here so that you can see it. Now understand that this is really important. Um, this is a really important concept. So the majority of carbon dioxide is carried as that bicarbonate. And what you can see in this equation is that carbon dioxide plus uh, water is going to yield carbonic acid, which can then skew all the way to the right, releasing hydrogen ions and bicarbonate. So that last one is the bicarbonate that um, carbon dioxide is mostly carried at. Now, you can also see by the arrows that this equation can go both ways, and I'm only pointing this out because this is going to be an important concept later on when we talk about acid-base balance in the blood. So I'm just introducing you to it here. We'll talk about it more later. So carbon dioxide is mainly carried in the blood as bicarbonate um, because it is soluble. About 5 to 10% of carbon dioxide is carried bound to hemoglobin, and the other 5 to 10% is actually dissolved in the blood itself. And so the basis for this gas exchange that occurs within the lungs is that the partial pressure of oxygen is greater within uh, the alveoli, and so oxygen can move from the alveoli to the blood to be then carried on to the rest of the body and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide will be greater in the blood because this is deoxygenated blood in those capillaries, and so the carbon dioxide will be greater there, and so carbon dioxide can then move from the blood into the alveoli to then be exhaled and removed from the body as waste. So what are some things that can then affect how um, this gas exchange occurs? One of them is membrane thickness. The thinner the membrane, the faster the rate of diffusion is going to be because that gas doesn't have to cross so much area. Some things like uh, fluid filling in those spaces, such as you would see in things like asthma, pulmonary edema, if there's fluid in those spaces, then it creates another barrier or a thickening of that membrane, such as you would see in pulmonary fibrosis. That's gonna create another barrier and make it more difficult um, for these gases to diffuse. Another thing that can affect it is the membrane surface area. The lungs have a very, very large surface area. As a matter of fact, if you took a lung and you spread out one lung, remember you have two, one on the right, one on the left. If you took out one lung and you spread it, it would fill up about the size of a tennis court. So it's a huge surface area in there, which allows for a lot of oxygen to pass through into the capillaries and a lot of uh, carbon dioxide to get out of the lungs and us to exhale it. So this is happening very efficiently. However, if the alveoli start to break down in diseases, such as um, emphysema, then that's going to really lower the amount of surface area that's there and also affect that rate of gas exchange. And of course, pressure differences across the membrane. If you're in an area where oxygen is low, uh, such as climbing a mountain, that is really going to affect how much oxygen can come into the body, and that's going to also affect the rate of gas exchange. I hope that this video helped you to better understand how gas exchange occurs between the alveoli and the capillaries, how partial pressure, diffusion, all of that plays a role, and how if there's something wrong with the lungs, well, that can be affected. If you have any questions or comments, please make sure to put them down below. If you ever have any ideas of a video you'd like to see, put that down below as well. Thank you so much um, for supporting my channel. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe, click on the notification bell so that you never miss out on a new video, and like and share my channel. Thank you so much.